So I decided to buy myself a new vehicle. This was in September of 22 that I took delivery. I've had it for a year and I started tearing into it. So these photos are from August of 23. It's a 2023 1SS Camaro. And that means I don't have a Bose system, which was intentional. Now, you haven't seen a lot of videos from me on a car audio and acoustics yet, and that's because I spend a lot of time in the forums sharing all that information. But we're going to go into detail, and I've recorded everything in 4K, just so that way you can see what I do to try to make a car enjoyable and quiet. When we're talking about how do we do acoustical treatment in a car, a lot of people use the term deadener, deadening, um, dampening, which we're not getting no wet here providing acoustical damping, structural damping. Now, I have a fan, a box fan going, and you can probably hear that. And that's because I'm going to be taking this insulation and tearing it up and producing dust. Now, I don't want to breathe that dust in. And for the purpose of talking to you, I don't want to wear a respirator or a mask because you won't be able to understand me. So from a demonstration standpoint, I have that fan running. That's a little bit of background noise. We're just going to have to deal with it. Now, this car is filled with hollow cavities. For example, this is a barrier of jute padding, a little bit of noise blocking performance and like a formed vinyl, kind of mass loaded vinyl. But what it reveals is a hollow metal cavity. Now, what we have here is actually the gasoline filler neck. So this kind of piece here doesn't actually exist on that side of the car, just exists on this side of the car. So this is a different arrangement than that side. But the approach is the same. We have this huge hollow cavity that I can put my hand in, and I don't want hollow cavities in a sound quality uh, format because those hollow cavities will resonate. What that means is the speaker will produce a sound or the subwoofer will produce a sound. And that sound, I want to leave the cone, travel to my ears, and enter my ear holes at the appropriate time. The problem with a cabin like this is I get lots of reflections. Now I can manage that somewhat, but I'm limited. The other problem is that other things generate noise. I have other noises, other reflections, other resonances, essentially. So I'm using a fan to tear this up and or to move the dust and I'm using this to stuff inside all of these cavities as full and dense as I possibly can. You might notice I have padding here. This, this hole, that is completely filled. I don't have any deadener on it yet, but I will because I will actually want to contain you know, a lot of that. Same up here. I have this whole area completely stuffed. And I've got that side done. Now I'm moving to this side. So let's talk about what that means. So because we want all of the hollow cavities to be filled, these are cavities that we want to fill. So how do you get to them? Well, you're going to have to stuff stuff in here. A little bit. A little bit more airflow. And then find a way to non-destructively stuff them up. Now we can see I just pushed it past here. So have another piece. I want this whole thing full. Now you want to pay attention to anything that might move, right? There, we can see it right there. And this process seems tedious because it is very tedious. And you might not have seen anybody else do this before because most people don't. Should they? Absolutely. I'm not adding weight to the car for the most part. Like this bag doesn't weigh very much. It's 50 cubic feet is the total amount of volume of stuff. And I will use that entire bag on just this car. And the reason for that is there are so many hollow cavities. And it's not important that it's one solid piece. This is just like a fibrous material. And honestly, it wants to be a fibrous material. Now, the benefit that we get from using vinyl tools instead of like a screwdriver is I'm not scratching the metal while I'm using it. And that's important. Now, we know that there are going to be certain things that we want to prevent from interfering with. This being one of them, this is where the retractor goes for the seatbelt. Uh, and this is where the bolt goes for this upper part. So, but I'm not worried about having anything visible up here. You know, any place where a clip goes in, that's not gonna stop a clip from going in. It's the other benefit of this method. 
Now, I do eventually want to get some deadener in here, but I'm not going to be able to put it in and inside this cavity. I can put it back down there. In fact, I got this whole hollow cavity here. So when you get to hollow cavities that are more contiguous, you might take an entire block like this and just shove that whole block down there. Now the problem is, is you don't know how big that cavity is. And it could actually have other like pathways. And that's the case here, is I actually have a spot that runs forward a little bit. So really, you're trying to make this as dense as you possibly can. Uh, you can't use too much of this it is an interesting side effect. Now, if I can fit this piece in here, that'd be kind of cool. And again, you can see all this dust coming off of it, right? That's why that fan's running. Now, you might find that doing this is at a possible risk of cutting your hands open, because it is. This stuff is, these edges can be kind of sharp, so you gotta be careful. But that's true with just working with Denner in general. You can see how much we've used already, and we're just talking this, the B pillar, man. And that is essentially what our process is. Now, I haven't done any deadening yet, but I will. I'm obviously going to take some patches, and I'm going to put them right there. Now, I'll show you what that looks like. So, you can use rollers and whatnot, but a simple block of wood that's rounded also works really well. Now, you might want to take your constrained layer damping products and cut them into pieces that are more manageable. You know, do a test fit before you remove it and make sure you're going to be successful. You don't want it to get all bunched up and weird. So I'm about to say something that I actually disagree with. I'm going to say that you can use smaller pieces of deadener or CLD. And the reality is that you get different results. And the best thing that you want to do is have the largest possible piece you can fit. You'll also notice that the product that I'm using in the first scenes of this video is going to be different than the product that I utilize later. That's because I had an order of Resinex products coming, but I also had the time, so I decided to utilize the Ram Audio BXT2 that I had just laying in stock and utilize that on the exterior and rear of the vehicles that I consider to be less crucial because I could get as much ultra touch as I did. So take all that into consideration with what I'm about to say next, but I was just trying to make it fit and fitment is important. So what that means is you might be working with a few smaller pieces, something like that. And there's even a hollow piece here that runs back behind here that I'm gonna have to stuff and fill. But you do want to move to your constrained layer damping products before you uh, install all of your padding. So as you can see, I'm just simply working this in. You want it to be uh, in good contact. Now, I've already kind of done some surface cleaning. There's always going to be oils and stuff like that on the metal. So you just simply take some alcohol and a paper towel and just kind of wipe it all down. You don't want to just treat, like start putting stickers on dusty, dirty things. You can see all the dust that's already here, right? This stuff, while it works well, and it's not itchy because it's recycled denim, uh, it's, it's still dusty. So don't breathe it in unless you have, you know, well, don't breathe it in. Try to find some way to get rid of it, and it's just going to cover the car with dust. A leaf blower works pretty well to like get the house all the hell out. So we are going to add more. And this block is handy because you can fit it in spots where you might not be able to fit other things. So one of the things that I I do to determine how much and where I need deadening is to touch things, tap things, right? That makes kind of a resonant sound. And then hold your piece up, decide how large of a piece you can get away with. Understand where clips are. So then that way you're not covering up holes that have clips on them. So for example, I know that fits really nicely. So what we'll do is make sure we don't cover up a hole. 
be careful with the edges of deadener. It is aluminum. It will cut your hands. That's why we use a, a tool to spread it out. Already sounds less like a piece of metal. So we're gonna continue this process and just go on and on and on and on, treating and filling the entire rear of this vehicle. All right, so we have applied some constrained layer damping. I've got this entire area up here stuffed. I have everything behind here stuffed. And now I'm ready to kind of fill this final cavity and show you what it looks like when you put it all back together. Big giant piece here, because I have a big open cavity. So what I'm trying to do is piece these in. Now I don't really have to worry about like taping it up or securing it any other way because we have the original panel. It's actually gonna cover all of this and essentially hold it in place. I just want to ensure that I have as much in here as I can realistically fit. I mean, I don't want, this is my chance. This is my one time to do this. So then once you get that, this simply gets placed back on. And because I have clips to pinch this, back in place, that's why I don't have to worry about securing it any other way. So I do actually appreciate the way that GM positioned this because it gave me the opportunity to not have to build this noise barrier. This noise barrier is sufficient. Now I have a very, very dead quarter panel. Both these quarter panels are incredibly dead. Dead, of course, meaning just not a lot of resonance. So I have a cavity that's down here as well. Now that's on the inside of the car, but all I have to do is simply stuff that and voila, I start adding more sound absorption in areas that aren't, that are actually part of the cabin. And again, more airspace that you stuff and treat, the quieter your car is going to be. And you might say, but Richard, this is a V8 Camaro. Don't you want to hear the engine? And the answer is yes, I do. But I want to hear the engine. I don't want to hear the engine rattling everything. That's not cool, man. The engine is cool. The exhaust is cool. The sounds that it makes naturally, those are cool. How it resonates in the cabin. Yeah, maybe the designers thought, hey, it'd be really cool if this thing made extra noise. But I don't think that's cool. I think it needs to make an appropriate amount of noise. So now that I got that done, you know, I'm gonna go through and continue to stuff every available cavity that I can find and then treat it along the way. So the process continues just like that. You disassemble the interior and then you start putting sound absorption in it. And obviously this took several days worth of work, applying deadener or CLD to the metal surfaces after cleaning them and then starting to stuff insulation in. And as you can see, you strip the car out. You really need to be confident enough to take all of the interior out all the way down to give you access to all of these parts and pieces. That's just part of the game if you really want to make a car as quiet and non-resonant as possible. Now the passenger side has a battery and this presented a lot of challenges because that meant there were other things in the way. These little holes that you see, all of that has to be filled. First thing we have to do is actually get the battery out of there so we know what we're working with. Now this is essentially a distribution block that comes from the factory with some other taps that aren't used and it has the opportunity to rattle. Now I'm not taking that apart at this time, but I am treating the entire battery tray with deadener and sound absorption and then closed cell foam. As I stuff that rear quarter, again, as full as I can get it, I actually start closing it up a little bit. And in the final photos of the build, you'll actually see I fully encapsulate all of these holes, all of these hollow cavities that have ultra touch get encapsulated. Even when I put the fuse block back on, I put little pieces of foam. I wanna keep everything from rattling. But this is part one. Next, we're gonna show how we incorporate all of this Resinex product into the build. It gets a little crazier. And if you thought the rear of this car was nuts, just wait till you see what I do to the doors. Thank you for watching.